Hey, welcome back to another look at the X-Files. Today we're checking out Avatar episode 21 of season 3. Avatar debuted April 26, 1996 and follows Skinner as he becomes embroiled in a murder investigation after his one night stand winds up dead. Strangely though, no blue cat people. The episode begins as Skinner is getting ready to sign his divorce papers. I had no idea he was married. But Skinner is a mysterious fellow so who knows what else he's hiding from us. He's not quite ready to sign anything. I'm guessing it's his wife who wanted it in the first place. So in the meantime, he's gonna get shit-faced at the Cheapskate Lounge. Or Chesapeake Lounge, I guess. Excuse me, are you holding this for someone? It's the only open seat. Go ahead. Skinner should be on high alert though because since when do women ask to sit next to men? I already sense that she might be up to something. Sorry, I'm just naturally paranoid that people are always up to something when they're acting friendly. They have a nice little chit chat, you know the ball game, the weather, and things escalate very quickly. Skinner hasn't even signed his divorce papers and he's already shaboinking this random woman. I would pay a million dollars to never have to see his O face again. <laughs> This has to be the worst time for Skinner's dead grandmother to pay a visit. This obviously wakes Skinner from his sleep, but was he dreaming about having sex with this woman immediately after having had sex with her? I don't know how he didn't wake her though, she must be a heavy sleeper. Generally something like this wouldn't get Mulder's attention, but because it involves Skinner, he needs to find out what's going on. Mulder is told about the woman Skinner met and what happened afterwards, but beyond that he doesn't know how or why this woman is now dead. He refused to take a polygraph test. It's not helping his credibility. Or maybe he knows they don't actually work and isn't about to waste his time. Mulder has Scully head to the morgue and check out the victim's body while he takes a gander at the crime scene. But the tape outline of her body is one of the funniest things I've seen in some time. It's not as funny as the one in Roland with the exploded head, but it's up there. Scully doesn't find much outside of the victim's Steven Seagal neck break, but Mulder at least knows where she used to work. She was a prostitute. Man, you think you know someone. I know Skinner is going through some shit at the moment, but a hooker? Really? The agents both head out to leave, but before Scully does, she notices something strange about the body. I don't know why Scully looks so confused about what's around her mouth, because, well, she was a prostitute. Mulder and Scully decide to meet with her former employer and ah, uh, I was hoping it was Dolomite. Bitch, are you for real? All they want to know is if Lorraine's girl was working last night and who hired her. She's really hesitant to tell them anything because most of her clients are high profile individuals and this should shock absolutely no one. I took his credit card. Then you have his name. Walter Skinner. You know, it's always the quiet ones. Even with the fingerprints and credit card info, Mulder still doesn't want to believe that Skinner would do something like hire a prostitute. They meet up with Skinner after his release, but he really doesn't seem to be in the mood for talking. Oh, why, there's a prostitute in the morgue with your fingerprints all over her? You didn't know she was a prostitute, did you? How could he not know she was a prostitute? He gave them his damn credit card info. No time for prostitutes, though, because Skinner's grandmother is back. And now she's gone. Oh, wait, there she is. Oh no, it's just Skinner's soon-to-be ex-wife. Imagine having to explain to your wife what's going on. She's definitely getting the house now. And it looks like I was right. She was the one that filed the divorce. Skinner got a little too boring for her liking, so ending things seemed like the most logical choice. She asks Mulder if he thinks Skinner could have done what he's being accused of, but Mulder doesn't believe Skinner did anything wrong. Outside of the whole sleeping with another woman while you're still married anyways. But they've got to get going because there are some shenanigans afoot in Skinner's office. Agents Mulder and Scully? That's yeah. right. I'm Special Agent Bonacasey. I've been called up from the Norfolk field office to coordinate this inquiry. Skinner's being investigated not just because of this case that he hasn't even been charged with yet, but also to see if he's even fit to be the assistant director anymore. Both Mulder and Scully will be required to go to a hearing tomorrow and bring with them any evidence they may have collected. Mulder and Scully are both worried about Skinner, but it's Scully that might actually have an explanation for what's going on. So you think that Skinner may have killed the victim in his sleep? Defending himself against this imaginary old woman. 
Skinner has been seeing a therapist for a sleep disorder, and Scully thinks that maybe he killed the woman in his sleep, thinking that he was defending himself from this old woman he keeps seeing. Seems plausible, you can't exactly control yourself in your dreams. So Scully comes in with a theory that could explain what happened, and boom! Mulder whips out a book he had laying around about a succubus. This is why I love this show, it's so absurd at times. But interestingly, Scully isn't immediately disregarding what Mulder has to say. Also, these supposed succubi tend to leave some sort of luminescent glow on their victims, which if you remember, the prostitute did have some succubus spunk around her mouth. But of course, when they check out the body, that glow is no longer there. Scully even sent in a sample, except the lab she sent it to found nothing. Meanwhile, Skinner's wife decides to pay him a visit so they can have a very uncomfortable talk about the hooker he did or didn't kill. Just want you to let me in. Just this one time. Why? Because I know you. I feel like I'm watching something on Lifetime. Later that night, Skinner gets woken up by that damn old woman screaming again, and to make things worse, detectives pull up to his house because his wife was driven off the road and they think Skinner is involved. Skin man just can't catch a break. At the police station, Mulder meets with Skinner and tells him they're starting to build a case against him. This is when Skinner finally opens up and explains to Mulder who or what this old woman is that he's been seeing. He claims he first saw her back in Vietnam as he laid bleeding to death. She picked him up and carried him away from the light, saving him in the process. And since she's returned, Mulder thinks she's protecting him from something. But what? I have no damn clue. Also, what happened to her being a succubus? They literally just introduced this theory and I guess she isn't one anymore? Oh, and look who it is. I'm sure this a** has nothing to do with any of this. They matched the paint in the dent to Sharon Skinner's car. Well, it looks like Skinner must have done it. Clearly it was his car that drove his wife off the road. I guess Skinner is going to prison for a long, long time. Or is he? Mulder always has something up his sleeve, so he brings the airbag to our boy Pendrel. See this pattern here? It was created by whoever was behind the wheel when the airbag deployed. Doesn't look like a face. Not yet. I don't know all the science-y ins and outs, but I guess the chemicals inside the airbag somehow left an impression of the person's face who was driving the car. So this will certainly prove Skinner's innocence. Also, I never noticed this before, but Agent Pendrel sounds a lot like Evil Ed from Fright Night. And I'm running it through software which translates its varying densities into a dimensionalized likeness. Far be it from me to turn down a fool's money. <laughs> Is there a reason why they couldn't have lights on for Skinner's hearing? Anywho, Mulder doesn't show up because it's Mulder, so it looks like Scully's on her own in saving Skinner's butt. Just as you might protect him by trumping up unidentifiable evidence. No, that is not true. And she does a pretty bad job of it too. I mean, just look at Skinner's face. He knows he's boned. Mulder arrives late as usual and Skinner is now out of a job. Yet Mulder somehow thinks all of this was to get at them. With no more Skinner, they no longer have any protection and are now sitting ducks. But Mulder does have the face of who was driving Skinner's car, and honestly, that could be just about anyone. Well, this guy is a paw. Paws always make the first move. So he must have hired the prostitute. This always felt like something they added in after the fact. Like they forgot to add an explanation for Skinner hiring the prostitute, so they just had Scully throw out a line saying, Oh, this other guy who may or may not have driven Skinner's wife off the road? He was the one who hired the prostitute. They decide to speak to Lorraine the pimp, but looks like someone got to her before they could. Luckily, one of her other girls happens to be at the crime scene, so they have a little chat with her. They want her to identify their mystery man, and she somehow recognizes him. I need you to arrange a meeting. Well, I can't. I mean, Lorraine's the only one who ever really talked to him. Unfortunately, Lorraine can't get to the phone right now. They hand her a phone, and she sets up a meeting with the guy, but how did she know his number? Lorraine would have been the person setting all the women up with the men, so how would any of her employees know her clients' numbers by heart? Also, he's right there. Just turn and look! Things get very days of our lives when Skinner visits his wife in the hospital, telling her he isn't signing the divorce papers. I'm just waiting for her to come out of her coma so she can tell him she was having an affair this whole time with his father's, brother's, nephew's, cousin's former roommate. What's that make us? Absolutely nothing! Their mystery man appears to be a little late, but I'm sure everything is fine. It's not like he knows the whole thing is a setup. When the Lady of the Night decides to powder her nose, Scully tells Mulder to come up right away because she thinks the guy is in the room. What the hell are 
you doing? Sorry, I called, but she didn't answer. What's the matter? <laughs> Wait, so the guy was behind the door and the woman didn't notice? The door was closed when Scully walked up to it, so he would have been standing there out in the open. Anyways, there's a few gunshots, and I guess Scully and her friend are both dead. Oh my god, it was Skinner that did the shooting, but how did he know they were there? When Skinner is finally able to get back to work, that is the exact question Mulder asks him as well. Skinner basically brushes it off and won't say, but I guess it was the old woman speaking through his wife who told him what was going on and where. I don't know, but that's my best guess anyways. <sighs> Precious. Avatar is an okayish episode that doesn't really make much sense. It's part standalone monster of the week and part mythology. Mythology in the sense that it was clearly Cigarette Smoking Man who was behind what was going on, at least with regards to the framing of Skinner, not so much the old woman he kept seeing, and God knows what that was all about. I would love to know how this assassin that was hired to kill Skinner's date managed to kill her in bed without waking up Skinner. He must be a really heavy sleeper, and because her neck wasn't just broken, it was completely turned around. There isn't a whole lot to say about this one. We're nearing the end of season 3 and this episode kind of feels like filler. Apparently David suggested they focus an episode on Skinner's character so he and Jillian could get a little break, but it only seemed to backfire on him because Mulder ended up becoming a much larger part of the story. David and Howard Gordon worked together on creating a story about the price the characters of Mulder, Scully, and Skinner pay for the truths they try and seek. Because Mulder is always trying to expose the lies, and Skinner generally has his back. They paint a large target on themselves, and it usually comes back to bite them in the ass. During this time, Skinner was also becoming something of a fan favorite, so they wanted to give Mitch a little bit more to work with and help flesh out his character some more. Up to this point, we really didn't know much about him. We knew a little of his stint in Vietnam, but beyond that, not much else. Writer Vince Gilligan has even come out and said that Skinner was originally supposed to be a bad guy, which you can kind of see in his earlier appearances, but as time went on and the character became more popular, and because Mitch himself was such a good actor, they decided to make him an ally for Mulder and Scully. There was supposed to be more cigarette smoking man in the episode as well. Originally, Skinner and CSM were supposed to have a confrontation, but this was cut because of time restraints. In this scene, CSM would offer Skinner help or assurance of where his allegiance lies, and if they had kept this in, it would have made viewers question if Skinner really is on Mulder and Scully's side or not. There's also apparently another scene where Mulder has a confrontation with Skinner over where his loyalties lie, and based on the previous cut scene, I can understand why this one was axed as well. Although I'm not sure if this scene was actually filmed or not. This episode doesn't really have room for guest stars, as it's more focused on characters we already know. But we do have Jennifer Hetrick as Skinner's wife in her one and only appearance. She's a character actor and probably best known as Vash on Star Trek The Next Generation and Deep Space Nine. The only other real notable guest star would be Amanda Tapping, who played the prostitute Karina. Her role in this was small, but Stargate fans will know her as Samantha Carter from Stargate SG-1 and Stargate Atlantis. Avatar currently sits at 7.6 on IMDb. I'm probably going with a 6 myself. It's fine for what it is, but it does feel like something they just had to put out because they're obligated to. Next up, however, we have one of my favorites and part 3 in the Quilogy as Mulder and Scully investigate a lake that appears to be the hunting grounds of a Nessie-like monster in the episode Quagmire. So what do you think of Avatar? Let me know down in the comments. Anyways, that's all for today, folks. I hope you have a great weekend and stay spooky. Mulder and Scully investigate a bizarre murder. Her spinal cord was crushed, Mulder. And all the evidence. Why would you tell us what happened last night? Leads to one shocking suspect. You really believe Skinner did this? We don't know who he really is. Their boss. <laughs> don't miss a brand new X-Files Friday at 9, 8 central.